So, hello and welcome to another video from sickmouse.co.uk where you can find lots of free GCSE and A level maths videos. This one's about binomial expansion for module C4. Of course, you've learnt this also in module C2 of A level, in Excel, of course. Um, but uh, although you're possibly taught two methods including this method here okay for C4 you just have to use this method because we're doing some funky stuff with N instead of you know when you were expanding in C4 I mean C2 it kind of made sense you kind of square the bracket or did it to the power 4 okay but over here we're not going to do you should use normal kind of numbers we're going to use fractions and negative numbers which is really strange how do you expand a bracket to the power of a negative number or whatever okay so when you do funky stuff like that you're kind of constrained to about how you can actually expand it okay and it also constrains what kind of numbers you can have so not really actually um, it you do have to say what the expansion is valid for so once I've got crazy numbers that are not just normal whole numbers i.e. Ne uh, ne negative numbers or numbers less than one or fractions okay automatically this a expert okay is less than one the modulus of it is less than one now you might think uh, if you've seen the binomial expansion um, well this method before in the what's it called formula book that it looks a bit different well because they write it up the messed up way okay so I usually write it in a way that makes sense and they usually write it in a way that makes it really difficult to understand okay they don't even write the a bit they, they just write x there okay and uh, basically it doesn't make sense they ignore what they've got to say or understand this and then you really understand what they've got in the formula book the formula book is just a complicated way of writing it anyway let's get on with um, doing an actual question um, this is the core thing that's all we're really practicing and a few tiny things on top and all this stuff is quite straightforward boring really um, so let's go for it here's number one uh, if I've got two root one minus three x that can be converted um, so it looks a bit like this with a power okay because square root turns into power half so now I've got two brackets 1 minus 3x to the half okay and I'm happy to start using this now because as long as I've got a 1 in the front this method works um, so how does it expand let's give you an example um, n of course is your power n and don't forget that you start from n and it goes to n minus 1 then it goes up to n minus 2 and this starts this goes from x to ax so ax to ax squared ax cubed 2 factorial 3 factorial there's an obvious pattern right so let's start applying the method um, I've got my n on the top so my n is half in this case so it becomes starts with 1 as this one does so I've got 1 there 1 there and then I have to do n ax which means half times ax ax in this case is minus 3x so half times minus 3x then so that's basically my second term my first term is there my third term is basically from this one here so n times n minus 1 okay which is half times minus half because if I do if n is half uh, then n minus 1, half minus 1 is minus half, so that's that bit there. Then I have to do ax squared, which is minus 3x squared, over 2 factorial, which is really actually just 2. Okay, if you don't know what factorial means, I'm shocked. Okay, how can you get up to C4 without knowing that? Because in C2 you would have known factorial means, uh, for example, 3 factorial means 3 times 2 times 1, or 5 factorial means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So 2 factorial is 2 times 1, which is just 2 really, as I was saying before. Anyway, uh, let's do this part of the expansion n uh, then n minus 1 n minus 2 so n, if n is half then n minus 1 must be minus half take away 1 again gives you minus 3 over 2 um, of course now we've got ax cubed over 3 factorial as that says right and um, 
What else? Oh yeah, the point is that this expansion goes on and on and on. It didn't stop at AX cubed, but typically we just stop at AX cubed and I'll explain why soon. Um, and of course, it said two times all of this. So this stuff is equal to this, roughly speaking. Of course you can expand it more, but I'll tell you, as I just said, so normally they just ask for the expansion up to X cubed, and then you have to do two times all of that stuff. So let me go through that with you a little bit, although I don't really want to tell you how to multiply brackets at this stage. should be very easy for you. Um, so that bit says 1, so 2 times 1 is 2. So that's the first bit of multiplying the brackets. And this stuff is multiplies to minus 3x over 2. If you times that by 2, it becomes just minus 3x. And on and on and on. Very easy stuff. OK. Let's go to example number 2. I've got 5 over root 9 plus 2x, which easily becomes this. Yeah, because root means half, power half, and the minus means it was underneath because minus means flip upside down or divide by. So basically this is equal to this. Okay, now what's the problem with this? Or what's the difference between this example and that example in terms of what what's so special about it is that it does not have a one. And I said as before, I said you need to have a one to use this expansion because look it says one plus something. But this says nine plus something. Yeah, with an X in, of course. Um, so what I do is I take this bit here, and I, I write it here, and I say, well, you know 9 plus 2X, I can write it as, I can divide it all by 9, so I get 1 plus 2X over 9, and then put a 9 outside. So basically, that's the quick way of doing it. Divide it all by that number, and take that number outside. Very simple. So now this to the power minus half is this to the power minus half, and 9 to the power minus half is basically one third. Okay, because 9 to the half is 3, minus means turn upside down, so 1 over 3. So basically that 3, that becomes a 3, and I still have to do that to the power minus half. So oh, basically I get 5 thirds, because that 1 third times the 5 becomes 5 thirds, and that to the minus half, well, I can't be bothered to expand that. You know what? I forgot got something. I forgot to say what this expansion is valid for, which is very interesting. Uh, well, it's not that interesting, to be honest. Um, I exaggerate, don't I? So, uh, this is valid for uh, minus... Well, my AX, as it says, where does it say it? AX has to be less than 1. That's what we're looking for. So, my AX is minus 3X, and the modulus of minus 3X is the same as modulus of 3x of course because modulus means basically get rid of the sign it means what's the physical size of it so if 3x is less than 1 therefore x is less than 1 third and that's done so it's valid for that sometimes they ask for that or well, sometimes they just tell you anyway okay now another example now from here on it's just so easy uh, it's just very tiny examples I'm explaining uh, if you got something like this you got two factors on the bottom it makes sense to break it down into partial fractions. If you don't know what a partial fraction is, just go and watch the partial fractions video, which is also part of C4. Okay, uh, so once you've broken it down like that, obviously 2 over 1 minus 2x is the same as 2 times 1 minus 2x to the minus 1, and that's obviously just 1 plus x to the minus 1. Okay, so very very simple, and uh, but the interesting thing about this actually is this bit. What is it valid for? Well, you got two expansions going on, so it's valid for this bit. Is it valid for minus two x is less than one, as it says here, the modulus of that, of course, and the modulus of x for from this expansion. Uh, x uh, this expansion is valid for x is less than one. Okay, but we need uh, one thing, uh, one expression that is valid for the whole thing. Yeah, not just this one or that one, because this is a combined question. Okay, because we're thinking about this is what it came from one question, not two questions. Okay, so we want um, an inequality that is true in both cases. Uh, which one is true in both cases? Well, that basically means 2x is less than 1, therefore x is less than half. So if x is less than half, it is also less than 1. So that means we use this inequality because it's true for this situation and this situation, i.e. for both, exp uh, both expansions. This is true. 
Okay, now more easy stuff. Uh, I kind of mentioned this earlier on. Why do we normally stop at uh, x cubed in our expansions? Because if x is a really small number, x so for example 0 0.00005, okay, then x cubed is going to be really, really, really small, so small that we say it is negligible. You can ignore it basically, okay. So that's the idea of that, and that squiggly equals sign means roughly equal to, yeah. So that expands to this. But uh, it was roughly equal to this, yeah. Okay. Although I did say that this is equal to this, and I stopped at x cubed. Uh, it's equal to that up to x cubed, yeah. But okay, you get what I'm saying. Um, so basically, what I'm saying is, as this is what you would write as x uh, to the power n is, for n is greater than three is negligible. Okay. Sometimes it's when n is uh, you're allowed to. Be, go up to uh, power 4, okay, x to the power 4, okay, depends on the number, it depends what you think is negligible, or the question that thinks is negligible, okay, so this is the kind of stuff you can write down, if x is small, blah 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 is negligible, anyway, let's get on with this and try to finish it off really quickly, this again, this is comparing coefficients, that's all it really is, okay, I expand this, so I've got an a there, not a number, so I expand it with the a inside it, you should be practiced with this already from C2 and so they're saying the coefficient um, uh, when expanded it has coefficient 12 for x squared okay so the coefficient of x squared is 12 okay so um, this bit is 3a squared x squared and we're told that should be the same as 12x squared therefore 3a squared is equal to 12 therefore a squared is equal to 4 and therefore a equals 2 and that's it really uh, and finally we've got 1 plus 3x squared to the power minus one. What's special about this? Oh yeah, right. Um, there's a common phrase uh, when you come to this topic, which is write out the non-zero terms. Okay, and when you expand this, okay, you don't get any x's, do you? Can you see? It goes straight to x squared when you expand it using this expansion, and it goes to x to the power four as well. It doesn't do any x cubed. Okay. So these are the zero terms, obviously, because you've got zero x's and zero x cubed. Okay. So what they say often is write down, write out the expansion of the non-zero terms. Basically, don't waste our time by writing this stuff because we don't want it. What use is that? So these are the non-zero terms here: one minus three x squared and plus nine x to the four.